Good afternoon, guys. So I want to talk about um, how much effort you put into your to the roles that you're applying for. You may find it exhausting if you are putting 100% effort into applying for these roles and tailoring your CV to each role that you apply for. Now, if this word tailoring your CV is new to you, uh, then here's a short, sharp shock for you. Um, you should not be sending out 100% of your CV to roles without being tailored to that role profile, okay? If you listen to some of my other videos with the applicant tracking system, you'll know that CVs are being matched to the job profile through a, uh, an algorithm. So you won't even get a past the first gate, let alone through the recruiter's eyes. So you need to make sure that you are um, tailoring your CV to that job profile. So that's a lot of effort, you're saying. Yeah, of course it is. Applying for jobs is not going to be easy. In this day, it was never easy before the digital age. Okay, it was always very difficult. It was letters, it was posts, it was visiting center, uh, companies to do the... Oh, best get out the sun here, right? <laughs> it was visiting uh, um, places of work to drop off your CV at the reception desk, etc., etc. It was It was a hard slog. Don't think it's gotten any easier because of the digital age. All that's happened is you've increased your volume. The accessibility and the exposure to more jobs has become is very different, okay? You now have to move your your strategy to a, a different level or a higher level to be able to get success. So, how do you do this? Well, what I do is I put them into chunks of work, right? Um, the jobs that I really, really want. Who are the companies on my bucket list, yeah? If you don't have a bucket list, you need to create one. Um, I go after certain brands that are very appealing to me that I hear good news about and they're doing very innovative um, and interesting things. Um, they're the sort of companies that I want to work for. The projects are what interest me. So I have a list of guys that I'm constantly following. Do they come up with jobs? Do I do send um, probing emails and CVs them to say, you know what, if you've got something in mind, um, then let me know. Because don't forget, if there's a job being advertised, you're already too late <laughs> in some cases. I want them to think of me before, whilst they're thinking of the project setup, not not during the recruitment process, eh? Because some of these companies may be advertising out of a need of a policy. I've got to advertise this role for two weeks externally before we offer type thing. Um, so they're my bucket list, guys. Then I have a, a tier two, guys. Um, they are the ones where I feel that they're not on my bucket list, obviously, but they are a company that I would like to work for. They're offering a good role, and I think that I could do them a lot of good with my skills and experience. Um, and then you've got the lower tier ones, which are, you know what, um, I wouldn't mind working for this company. They don't seem that bad. Um, uh, I'm not that enamored with them, but I'll give it a go. And if it comes across, then cool. And then the last one, tier four, would be, oh dear, this is, this is a gap filler for me. Uh, let's just have a go. And then you could also look at... Oh dear, this is, this is a gap filler for me. Uh, let's just have a go. Yes, that's right, you heard me. There's going to be jobs out there and there's going to be times out there that you don't really want it, okay? But there's going to be a need, right? You're going to want to pay the bills. You want to give yourself a bit of a cushion. Your savings are drawing down. You're, you're sick of the job and you need to get out of it and go and get a different path. Go and get yourself a gap filler. That's the reality, guys. Don't worry, there's plenty of jobs out there. There's no more of these, I'm in the job for 30 years and a gap fillers are required. I've considered them. When I first got out of the army, I drove 40 foot trucks. I had a skill, it was on my license. I'm not knocking the job, but it, was, it wasn't the career path that I wanted. And I also found driving trucks actually quite a stressful uh, exercise because there's some right knobs on the road and, it, and you come back and you're absolutely wrecked. But it paid the bills and I was well happy for it. And it allowed me to go and do things and continue my business as I was building it. And I, I'm, I don't regret it. And even today, towards the end of um, when I'm looking for a different contract and I'm not getting the momentum I want to, then some of those other roles uh, seem more appealing. And again, because I'm in the contract market, if I'm in a contract for three months, one month, six months, two years, um, that's the life I've chosen. I quite enjoy that as well. It gets, 
it exposes me to a lot of different things. So there's no bad learnings for me. And that's the reason why I've said that. And then you could also look at a different tier, which is that that job is absolutely way out of my league, right? I'm going to give it a go, though. You know all those jobs. I'm going to give it a right big stab in the dark. I would love to get it. And you never know what. It's like the lottery. Something good may happen. So how much effort do you want to do? Well, that last one and tier one, you definitely want to be tailoring your, your CV to that role without a shadow of a doubt. How often do those roles come up? is how much effort you're going to put into it, right? Tier two, I would definitely make some amends to your CV to cater for some of that job profile, right? Depending on your desire and passion to go after that role. And tier three and four is where I probably just send off a bit blind. I would say, if I was to be honest, tier three, I may change some titles and some odd subject lines and maybe some key skills. But otherwise, it's my go to CV for that role. Okay, um, the difference with that is I probably have about 30 different CVs um, that I use for different skill sets. So I'm able to call on those CVs at any one point in time, any point in time, sorry, in order to send it off to a recruiter. Okay, so think about that as well. All right, so play with it a little bit. Um, again, enjoy it. Spring's approaching. Um, there's another seasonality of recruiting roles coming up. Budgets will soon be decided. Roles will come out on their further um, next month in April. Um, so start putting the legwork in now and you'll benefit from it there. All right, take it easy, guys. Enjoy.